Hi, how's it going? My name is Dal. Today I want to talk a little bit about artifact power. So artifact power and artifact weapons is a new concept that was added in World of Warcraft as an expansion legion. The idea was to give another form of progression, but it replaced the idea of having to interchange a weapon in raid situations, dungeon situations, or from any loot drops. So you would have a level uh, weapon that you would level with you, and you would have a talent system for it, almost like the vanilla talent system, except eventually you want to get every single trade unlocked and then you would keep exploring the weapon and leveling it up in terms of progression. So not only would you have character progression in terms of unlocking different talents and different abilities and getting max level, not only would you have raid style progression with different talent builds and learning the best rotation, but you would also have a weapon progression along the line, which would be indicative to be applied in PvP as well as PvE situations. And the whole artifact power, which comes from as a resource that you are trying to collect from world quests, dungeons, PvP, literally almost anything, in order to power a PO weapon, that whole concept has sometimes been driving people away from Legion. So today I want to talk a little bit about artifact power, how some parts of it were done right, how some parts of it were done wrong, and my thoughts on the whole shindig. So let's get to it. So artifact power and artifact weapon, first of all, I think it's a pretty cool idea. Because what it does is allows players to have some massive amount of exploration and progression in terms of their character and their specialization. Because all these weapons are tailored to your specialization. They allow you to explore a little bit more on your spec and what it can do. And allow you to enhance certain aspects of your spec. So when you think you learned your rotation but you unlock a few major traits, your rotation may change, your talent build may change, and you might find a better different playstyle for your spec altogether. So it gives you a little bit more of exploration in terms of learning your spec and learning what it can do. Then it also allows you progression as you build your weapon, it builds with you, it gets stronger with you, you're able to farm uh, artifact power in order to enhance it, and you're able to have a long-term grind for your character. And this grind does not really ever stop until a very, very long while afterwards, where you earn millions and millions and millions of artifact power, which kind of lets you have some longevity to the game. Because if you ever feel like you have a stop in progression, you can still farm artifact power and progress your weapon and make it stronger, which makes your character stronger, which makes it hit harder in raids, doesn't really apply for PvP. So that idea on its own is a pretty cool one, but it does come with some hindrances. Some of the hindrances it comes from is, first of all, people are putting a lot of time into the game. Now, that's not a bad thing in its own wake. I think the more, the more time people put into a game, the better. If people are playing the game a lot longer, that means it's a good game. So it is, I'm not saying that the more time people put into a game, the worse the game is. And we should have really short games where you're on for 20 minutes, like a Facebook game, similar to that of Garrison's or Warlord's Jenner, where you can just get your dailies and get off. I actually prefer the idea of having to be, or being able to commit a lot of time into a character and being able to progress him. But what this does is takes away a lot of time for players from being able to play alts. Because of Legion and Artifact Power and the way that Legion has been constructed, you have a lot of options in terms of growth for character progression, primarily single character progression. And I think it is single-handedly one of the greatest things ever, because in World of General, you basically were forced to play an alt if you wanted to have some sort of fun, because eventually after your dailies, after the stuff you would do for the day, you would run out of stuff to do. But in Legion, you literally can keep staying on that one same character and making him stronger and stronger and stronger. Maybe inch by inch, maybe little by little, but still, you are working on that character, and overall, you are making that character stronger. Either way, this whole system, I feel, first of all, is great, but the restrictions of alts is where the issue kind of lies in. People sometimes feel that they can't really play alts, and some people will like enjoying playing alts and like playing different characters more than once and uh, to be able to play this class for a bit, then this spec for a bit, then that whole nother class and explore a little bit on all the characters because not everybody commits time for that one character. So for anybody, which is I guess a portion of player community that loves playing with alts, those players are simply not going to be able to enjoy it as much. I mean technically you can play your alts and uh, have a main and put as much time into everything as you know uh, as equally as equally as possible but you will never get ahead in terms of your characters, in terms of progression, unless you do PvP, where gear and artifact power it matters not as much, but still matters. So, like, there's one aspect of the game where it works, but 
for everything else, you're kind of going to be behind at all times. But with the patch 7 1.5, they might be able to kind of uh, rectify the situation and um, allow you to get more artifact knowledge for characters so then you are able to make it maybe take like a day or two to grind up your full weapon and catch up to where your main is so you're able to work on your alt and basically stay where you're at. So we'll see how that system works and 7.1.5 might be the savior. One of the other issues of having these weapons and artifact power is the issue that is tied to a spec. Now because it is tied to a spec it gives basically the weapon a lot of replayability because you have three specs to choose from unless you're a druid or a demon hunter where you either have four or two. So when you have all these specs to choose from and to play with you are able to level your weapon or I guess more than one weapon more than once. So again it gives more longevity to the game and gives you more stuff to do but it does kind of make it easier for you to do it because you are earning knowledge which uh, basically increases the percentage of how much AP you get every time you get any amount of AP which is first of all a one of the single-handedly greatest things they added to the game for any players to be able to keep exploring keep leveling and instead of making it an impossible grind that just makes you want to tear your hair out it kind of catches up with you so it kind of gives you moments where you can like feed your excess artifact power instead of for your main spec you can feed it to your off spec until you get the research and then you can go back to farming your main so it gives you a little flexibility but what this does is kind of pigeonholes people into a main spec especially people that don't have a lot of time as Legion is one of those expansions where it takes a lot of time out of you for you to get really anything done and, and you guess anything worth, worth of substance done whether you are a raider or a pvp'er so you might invest a lot of AP into one spec and you might do it over a period of a week but all of a sudden the patch notes go up and your spec may suck whether it's pve or pvp and you've been investing a lot of time into that one specialization but all of a sudden blizzard made changes and we know blizzard we love blizzard but we do understand that sometimes some of the patch notes and some of the changes they make to classes some of the buffs and nerves just don't make sense and sometimes some people's specs and classes get screwed over completely and it takes sometimes a long while sometimes it never happens but eventually maybe kind of not sort of not every time the ramifications are you are stuck with the spec and you just put a lot of time about a week's worth of your artifact power so now if you want to let's say play a different spec let's say you're rogue and uh let's say assassination all of a sudden became a terrible spec and everybody's uh trying to main subtlety now you gotta grind all the ap again for subtlety all over again for most people this is the point where a lot of them would say i might as well even change my class or i might as well quit because then it's all of a sudden like, hey, I've been working so hard, all to find out that when I reach the top of the ladder, it's gonna suck, because <laughs> my spec got nerfed. Some people can get past the idea that, hey, you know, my spec got nerfed, but it's okay because I still like the playstyle. But a lot of people are playing video game to get rewards, and when they're playing a spec that sucks, then nobody wants them in a group, and rewards are not gonna be as great because you're not able to get in good groups, and you're not really able to do as much because again nobody wants you and then you start feeling bad about yourself because you can't help feel but bad when your spec sucks and everybody knows it and you know it but you keep playing it so then it's very demoralizing for some people actually for a lot of people i think for your average joe yeah if your favorite spec just got nerfed all of a sudden and blizzard didn't say much about it it would feel pretty shitty so it's one of those things where some people might just even quit so it puts people again pigeonholes into the spec and you never really know if your spec is going to be good or not, if it's going to be a safe spec, if your class is going to be safe. Another thing that Legion, I guess, and so on did is, as I talked earlier, you have to sink a lot of time in order to perform really anything. And because of AP, AP stuff takes a lot of time. It's specific, specific but the main part is it takes a lot of time out of you. So you might be spending a lot of time into this whole AP grind, and after playing Mesa Pandari, which was a little more chill, and then playing World of General, which was a lot more lax, all the players that started playing World of Warcraft at that point, and then they were basically thrown into Legion, where there's a lot more grindy stuff going on, which I personally think makes basically what an MMO is. Some people might be turned off by the MMO grind, the real freaking grind that kind of sets in. But some people would know that if you do PvP, then the grind doesn't feel that bad. If you are a casual player, then honestly, there's not really too far you can fall behind. And if you're doing world quests, and if you're doing your dungeon, and if you're doing your 1BG a day, you really can catch up. But a lot of people simply don't have this knowledge. Like, I know there's Wowhead and MMO Champion, but to my surprise, not a lot of people even Google things on World of Warcraft. 
So hence why my channels where we do updates on PTR and changes for classes are pretty popular because people get information from here. So this is some of my thoughts on the AP. I personally think that AP is one of the coolest things in the game added, mainly because this isn't something I experienced before. I've never been able to play World of Warcraft in vanilla, BC or Wrath, and I'm pretty sure it's safe to say Legion will not compare close to any one of those expansions. Mm, well, maybe Wrath, but that's just what one article said, and what one streamer said, and what one YouTube guy said. But hey, that's just the word of mouth. But Legion, I feel like it's a pretty cool expansion, and I like the idea of uh, character development. I, myself, if you watch my videos long enough, have complained about rogues and where they're at, because all three specs were getting kinda screwed in terms of PvP. So, rogues rose up, we got a few buffs, and it feels pretty good so far. But it was one of those situations where I know what it's like to feel pigeonholed into a spec. Many times did I consider maybe rerolling a class altogether, because I'm thinking that, okay, so I suck now for PvP, and then the next patch might break me for PvE. So I might not even be useful for my own raid, I might as well reroll Demon Hunter now, but then I'm thinking, oh, but I also have two legendaries in my rogue, I already have all this AP, I already know the rotation properly, I didn't even complete the class order hall quest on the Demon Hunter, and it's like, everything kind of snowballs to the idea that it's really, really easy to take that last step and simply quit the game. So, I feel like the AP created a very solid system for anybody who enjoys the idea of MMOs and the old school idea of grind. It shows, it gives you the progression system and spec specialization, but does come with its ramifications. And it's really up to the devs to uphold these ramifications, because the devs ultimately can be the people that could break the experience for a few. And not everybody will be very resilient and say, you know what, my spec sucks, and I'm seeing nerfs in the future, but I'm gonna persevere because I really, really enjoy the playstyle. Because, let's be honest, not everybody is this resilient. So, I just had some of my thoughts on Artifact Power, but what are you guys' thoughts on Artifact Power? And to tie it all together, TLDR, I feel Blizzard did a good idea, good thing. I think there's some room for improvement to appeal towards the casual market and they're kind of trying to do that in patch 7.1.5 by allowing people to catch up using their main towards the old in terms of artifact power. I feel like if they did this kind of system early on and introduced it maybe in patch 7.1 or something of that sort, I feel like it would have been a little bit easier on a lot of people in order to switch as they're seeing patch updates come up so people can swap around with their alts. But I do like the idea that the game is trying to solidify the idea that, hey, if you have a main class and you put enough work into him, and if you put enough effort, and if you do every single Mythic Plus dungeon, and if you do your raids, you can actually have the character be one of the most powerful characters in no time. So the more time you put into a character, the stronger they grow, and you can see this growth right in front of you, instead of having to wait for next raid tier to come out in order to finally get some good piece of gear, in order to finally get the Mythics done for it, and now you have to wait until the next tier of raids coming out. So, there are advantages, there are some disadvantages. I, for the most part, like the system, but what do you guys think? So let me know everything in the comments below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this type of video. I want to do a bit more discussion videos like these. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.